Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. Today we are going to be doing an accessibility review for Nana Asamoa, also known as Nakam Code on GitHub and they submitted their uh, portfolio site to me to have a look at. So that is what we're going to do today. So let's get started. Um, just visually it's looking nice and clean. I uh, can't see too many contrast issues but let's start straight away with uh, an axe dev tools check because that will give us a lot of instant uh, results to look at so if we go into inspect and axe dev tools and we'll scan the page 19 not too bad actually and uh, i can see that the first one is elements must have sufficient color contrast that's picking up 13 results sometimes this can give uh, a false positive um if Axe Dev Tools can't distinguish what the background colour is. So we'll have a look at that one, see if it's actually picking up real issues or not. And then some links must have a discernible text. So I'm imagining here that we've got a few links probably with icons that don't actually have a label. So let's just have a check of these quickly. And if we click on this one, we can highlight. Okay, so it's not picking up the that there's enough colour contrast between the green and the grey. That could possibly possibly be an issue let's see yeah okay so I've picked up the little um, page inspector I don't know element inspector I guess from um, the Google Chrome tools and just by hovering over that I can see that the contrast is only 2.31 which is a long way below the 4.5 uh, required standard so a couple of things you can do there either lighten the grey on the whole background or go in and choose a darker green colour. Um, either way, just try and bump that contrast up to at least 4.5, higher if if at all possible. Um, let's go through these. Again, the green on the grey. Um, okay, the we've got a pink. Oh, something's happening here. Uh, the pink on the white, or the white on the pink, should I say, has only got a contrast of 2.84. So again, probably if you want these all to have white text, then I would um, make that pink a lot darker so that you get up to the 4.5. The orange as well. And yeah, definitely white on yellow is not great at all. That's showing us 1.52. Sorry, it's flashing all over the screen. A contrast of 1.52 is really, really not good. Um, so either try having a black text on these so that they stand out a lot more against the background or make that background a lot darker. So that's going to be the same on all of these buttons. A slightly too light grey here on the... That one is so close to the colour contrast you literally just have to bump that grey down a couple of notches because it's 4.47. So just take it down a couple of notches and you'll be fine. Same there and the same there and the green again. Um, so yeah, just a few contrast issues, not too, nothing too major, um, but just have a look at those. And let's see about these links. Yep, yeah, I'm guessing then this, this, there's six links here and it's basically that it doesn't have anything that would read out that this is a GitHub link to anyone using a screen reader. Um, as you can say, see when I hover over it, the name and the role are empty. And actually it's saying that this is not keyboard focusable either, um, which is interesting. We'll have a check in a few minutes with a keyboard and, uh, oh there, maybe I was focusing on the wrong thing. But again, it's just saying uh, name is empty and the role is graphics symbol, which means it's an SVG. Um, that's not very useful information at all to uh, a screen reader user. So we'll check through these in a minute with a keyboard and see how they fare. Um, so let's close this down for now. And let's start then with tabbing through the site and checking that everything works with the keyboard. Uh, nice, okay, I've got a good focus indicator here and it goes to the first thing on the page. Again, I can tab through everything. Okay, if you see on this resume button, I do have an outline, but it gets cut off by the shadow. So I would consider either making the 
um, the focus indicator a little bit bigger so it goes around both or removing the shadow when this button is focused. It does actually, when I hover over it, the, the shadow goes away. So that might be something to just add in, not just on hover, but also on focus. Get rid of that uh, little shadow there, just so that this looks good. Um, okay, great, where do we go now? Oh, okay, uh, I see what's happened. I bet here, because my focus has actually stayed on the same place, I bet we've got a nested link inside a button or a button inside a link. So we're going to take a look at that straight away because I shouldn't be able to click twice on that. Let's have a look at this. Yep. So it's either a link or a button. It can't be both. Um, so this is a, it says it's to your resume. The question is, where does it open? Let's, let's just click it. It doesn't actually open anywhere. It's, it, there is no link to it at all. Um, so I would suggest fixing this up so that it actually does lead to your resume. If your resume is on a different page, then I would use just a link and style it as a button, but you should not have a, a button inside a link because um, this messes around with the, the tabbing and uh, it's just not very uh, semantic HTML. So take a look at that. Let's see if we can carry on. Where were we? If I'm just going to check that. Yeah, okay, I was on the resume button. I just want to check actually. No, okay, these green things aren't. This green is just uh, bolding things. It's not actually showing us links or anything. Okay. Okay, so I don't jump down to the whole card. It was a little bit hard for me then to spot where my focus has gone, but I can see it's actually jumped down to this um, GitHub link here. So it's not going to the entire card, but it's a link to the portfolio up here. And then we've got another link, which appears to just be going back home at the moment. Okay, this is to my portfolio, that would be why. Um, can be a little bit weird to link back to the place that you're already on, but there you go. And then the next one. Okay, great. Yep, okay. And then we jump down to the experience. Now we're on Google Developers. I've still got a good focus indicator. Um, and that's a link leading me somewhere. Okay, I'm not going to click on it just now. We go through those. Where am I now? Okay, same thing with this button down here then. Um, it was kind of hard to see that the focus is on half of it. And as you can see, when I hover the focus, you can see the focus properly. So that's just a case of on focus, removing that border as well. And again, the same issue here, we have got a button inside a link. Um, so make sure you take one of those out and uh, only leave one or the other. And then NACAM code link to GitHub at the bottom. Okay, great. That's looking good. I'm just gonna check none of these are actually links. They're just horrible, but they're not links. Okay, perfect. One more thing I want to do before we move it on is I'd like to check this at a mobile size. So let's just shrink that down. Okay, you can see immediately when I shrink it to mobile, we have a hamburger menu, but it kind of opens. Um, it's probably not what I'd expect, but um, it might just be something random with my, my uh, browser when it does that. Let's have a look. And I wonder if you can guess what I'm gonna say. <laughs> I cannot reach this hamburger button with the tab key. No, nope, it goes from the navigation bar into the navigation directly. Let's take a look at that. I'm going to make this slightly bigger again. In fact, let's make it bigger, but we'll inspect it. And let's put this into iPhone. And let's have a look at this hamburger okay we've got just a div with the id of hamburger and inside we've got divs with three lines okay so a div is not an interactive element so there's absolutely no way for a keyboard user to tab to this element at the moment in order for it to be tabbable this would need to be a, a button and it would also 
probably need an area expanded, which toggles true or false, depending on whether the uh, navigation is open or closed, so that a screen reader user knows if it's open or closed, and it would need a label, and it should not be called hamburger, even though it looks like a hamburger, or that's what we uh, like know to be as a hamburger, um, it should actually have a functional label in this case and the functional label would be something like menu so that when someone tabs to this they would hear um, something like menu button closed that would be you know it would have the role of button and it would have uh, it would be a label of menu and it would have an area expanded of false and then when you click on it and open up everything then it would be um, menu button open or expanded um, depending on which uh, screen reader you are using so definitely something to look in that into there is just making sure that this is a button that is tabbable um, and then can be pressed by its keyboard users okay other than that I think um, that should be fine let's check what this looks like hang on if i zoom it up to 400 percent that's always fun just want to check that everything reflows nicely okay we get the hamburger menu because it goes into mobile mode again that's not going to be keyboard accessible um but that's something we already know about and but everything else looks like it reflows nicely there's nothing being cut off that I can see at the moment. The image probably gets a little bit too big on uh, this size of screen. So that's maybe something you could add a, a media query because um, it would be difficult to focus on that all at once, but that's a minor thing. There we go. Everything reflows nicely into one column. So this is looking great. Fantastic. Let's put it back to normal. And let's see how this sounds. When we fire up Susan, the screen reader, and see what she has to say. So Susan's ready. Let's start um, going through the site. And I'm really just mainly interested in hearing what the links and things say. I know that she's going to read out the text as expected or I'm pretty sure she is. Um, so I'm just going to tab through the site. That's probably not what a screen reader user would do, um, but I'm going to start with tabbing through the site. Share this bookmark non ASMO front end developer document. Clickable main landmark navigation landmark list with five items link about. Okay, nice. We hear that it's a list, five items. Um, so we know this is a navigation. Project link. Me. Link. Mm, me. Link. I'm not too sure if that's really like clear what this would lead to, but... Skills link. Experience link. The other ones I think are fine. Resume button visited link. Okay, tw I had to press twice there because uh, we've got the button inside the link. Portfolio website link. Nakum360.netlify.app visited link. Mm, on this one, we have no area label. So this needs a label adding because otherwise it le uh, reads out the entire link, which in this case wasn't too bad because it wasn't too long. But if you um, had a very long uh, link with lots of random letters in it, then that would be a nightmare to listen to. Um, so definitely consider adding an area label to these so that uh, it's clear what they lead to. Time tracking dashboard link. Tracking dashboard dot netlify dot app link. Same there. Light and sound memory gain link. Sound gain dot netlify dot app link. And the same there. Um, so the GitHub ones are fine. They're actually reading out exactly as they should, um, but the open in a new tab link is just reading the actual link address which needs so all three of those need a label google developers link festman link 
Black Melanism link. Say hello button link. Okay. Nika code link. That one could be a little bit clearer. Maybe also tell me that it's going to GitHub. So NACOM code GitHub link might be uh, a little bit clearer. Um, but otherwise, sounds pretty good. So now I just want to check the heading structure of the page and uh, listen to that. So we're going to press the H key and go through the different headings. Hello, my name is heading level three. Okay, that's interesting. We're starting with a heading level three. Nana Azamo. Heading level one. I build things for the web. Heading level one. Okay, so here, this really is one sentence. Um, hello, my name is Nana Asamoa. I build things for the web. Um, I'm not even sure that it would be classed as a heading, it, but it, I guess it is the heading of your page. Um, start with a H1 and don't split it up into separate H1s. There should only ever be one H1 on the page. If you want to style it in the way that you have with the like slightly different colors, um, then and the slightly different text, then you need to use spans um, in order to add the styling inside the H1. Um, I'd probably say the hello, my name is Nana Asamoa is the H1. And then the build things for the web is actually just like a, a subtitle, which would be inside a, a paragraph tag, but then you style it so that it looks slightly larger than the rest of the text. Um, because HTML unfortunately doesn't have any semantic um, elements for subheadings in that sense of like something that comes directly under a heading, which is like a subtitle. Um, so it's best just to use a paragraph tag and then just style it differently. But let's carry on and see what we have next. About heading level two. Brilliant, heading level two. Project heading level two. Yep. Experience heading level two. Skills heading level two. What's next? Heading level three. Get in touch heading level two. Mm, I probably wouldn't have that what's next as a heading level three because it's not a subsection of the skills, which is a heading level two. Um, but other than no that. next heading. Other than that, headings seem to be really good. So there we go. Uh, NACAM code has a really solid profile as a basis to start from. Uh, just a few issues to work on, such as the green on the gray, making sure that you don't have nested buttons inside of links, choose one or the other, and uh, make sure that um, that hamburger menu is actually accessible with a keyboard. But other than that, really, really nice site. Thank you so much to Nakam Code for submitting it and letting me review it on my channel. And if you're interested in me doing a review on your website, do let me know. And I'll pop the link down below where you can send me the link to your website and I will have a look. Um, and until next time, thank you so much for watching. And uh, I'll see you in my next video. Bye.